Welcome back to That's Life with John Carver. This is episode number 311. And I'm calling this episode Living a Worried Life. Several years ago, I recorded some programs for cable television that were broadcast in about 1.7 million homes a week. And one of those broadcasts uh, shared many ideas from Dale Carnegie's book called How to Stop Worrying and Start Living. I have to admit that those cable television programs were initially directed to me on purpose about worrying. I've struggled with worry as long as I can remember. I can remember as a kid wondering if we were going to have enough food to eat, even though my parents never let us go hungry. There are many nights when I go to bed tired and can't sleep because I worry about my kids and my grandkids and my parents and our future. I had to learn to literally lower my heart rate so I could get to sleep. Yes, I learned to lower my heart rate because my heart would race as I worried about many things. I've used a pulse ox to verify that my heart rate lowers with certain techniques. Our daughter Juliana fought cancer eight times and rarely worried. She always amazed me how she could laugh and play while fighting for her life. She, without knowing it, lived a life of what Dale T Carnegie said, quote, if you want to avoid worry, do what William Osler did, live in day tight compartments, unquote. Don't stew about the future, just live each day until bedtime. You see, Juliana mastered that technique. Juliana had to get a bone marrow biopsy done in January 2016 when she was barely 14 years old, and by that time she had fought cancer six times. It was unusual, but she was worried for weeks about the biopsy that it was going to hurt. The evening after the biopsy, she said, that's what annoys me so much. I always get myself all worked up about the little things, so I always tell myself I always worry about nothing, unquote. Hi everyone, it's Joanna Carver. Um, I just wanted to update you on how today went. We got home a few hours ago from the biopsy. I just wanted to tell you how it went. I'm seen, but yes. <laughs> so like all this week I've been worrying about it because they've been saying that I was going to get local anesthesia instead of regular. So they were going to keep me awake for it. And I was like, I don't want to be awake because then I'll be like feeling it and stuff. And they're like, no, they'll give you a needle and numb it. I'm like, but I'll feel the needle. And I've been worrying about that the entire time. And then when it finally came to that, it was just a little poke. And then I was like, did I really worry this whole week about a little prick? <laughs> and then that's what annoys me so much when I do these kind of things. I always get myself all worked up about the little things. And then it doesn't hurt as bad. So I always tell myself I worry about nothing. So that was pretty much it. <laughs> Bye. I'm not suggesting that you don't plan for the future, but I am suggesting that, well, frankly, I haven't mastered not worrying myself. But maybe you and I can try to control what we can control because there's a lot in the world that we cannot control. One of Dale Carnegie's quotes about worry is, quote, remember, today is the tomorrow that you worried about yesterday. Again, remember, today is the tomorrow that you worried about yesterday. It seems that most of the things we worry about never happen. Your imagination and my imagination create all kinds of stories about what might happen tomorrow or next week or next month or next year. I try to convince myself constantly that none of my worrying is going to change anything beyond what I can control. Epictetus taught the Romans a couple thousand years ago, quote, and that is to cease worrying about things which are beyond the power of our will, unquote. Think about that quote for just a minute. You and I cannot control what we cannot control. Again, you and I cannot control what we cannot control. What you and I do daily impacts our lives more than the potential scenarios that might happen to us in our brains. You can, your consistent positive actions matter more than you can imagine. 
Now there's a second step to worry and anxiety that's helped me tremendously for a long time. I've, I've leveraged all the activities that I can control to reduce some of my worries. Again, I leveraged all the activities that I can control to reduce some of my worries. In other words, if some of my worries were a result of me not doing something, I did that something in order to reduce or eliminate the worry. This habit got that worry, whatever it was, out of the way so I could focus on other tasks to reduce my stress level. So as I end this broadcast, author Corey Ten Boom wrote, worrying doesn't simply empty tomorrow of its sorrow, it empties today of its strength. My name is John Carver. Thanks for watching.